guys, welcome to Motivational Monday. I wanted to sit down today and talk to you guys about health, wellness, and planning. I just did a presentation on it for my sorority sisters, and it was a really great discussion. And I said, you know what? My Nicole's Network family deserves to know some about this as well, because it's really important to making sure that you're living the best life you possibly can. And it really starts with making sure you have that commitment to your health, you have a commitment to your wellness, and you do so, do so by making sure that we're planning. Planning is everything. It's the only way you're going to be able to accomplish the many things that you're trying to accomplish in life. So I wanted to go through some of those tips and topics to make sure that you guys are aware of it as well, because you guys deserve that information too, right? Right. So starting off, the different types of health, you have your physical health, your spiritual health, your emotional health, financial health, and your mental health. So making sure that we're not allowing barriers to stop us towards making those goals to our health. So there's some of those barriers, including the, the fact that exercising is difficult. Exercising regularly, of course. Um, sometimes healthy food either doesn't taste too good or it's really expensive. Or if you're like me, you're hooked on fattening foods. Um, and also a big barrier is limited time for sure. Um, so some, making sure that we're consciously focusing on our physical health goals, overcoming those roadblocks to keep you motivated, um, and rewarding our accomplish, accomplishments overall. When it comes to your spiritual health, how often are you spending quality alone time? No TV, no phone, no distractions, no social media, etc. And one of the questions that came up in the presentation was, well, what are you doing? Well, if you don't have TV, phone, social media, what, are you, what is it that you're doing? You're spending that time uh, getting to know yourself, A, reading journaling, you know, if you're religious, you're reading your Bible, just some kind of alone time with you and God to just be and to deal with yourself, really. And then also, when was the last time you forgave yourself? I'll wait. Don't worry. Um, and so one of my favorite, favorite motivational speakers is Nick Lisa Nichols. And she has an exercise that I have adopted into my life, and I've seen tremendous progress. And basically, every day, you sit down and you talk about, you write down seven things that you're proud of yourself for, seven things you forgive yourself for, and seven things that you commit to yourself. So three different topics. <laughs> three different topics that you're committing to yourself. Um, and the, really the hardest part was the forgiveness. And I think so many times we'd underestimate how much baggage we're walking around carrying. And really and truly it's because we don't take that time to forgive ourselves. So as I'm doing these exercises, things from like 15, 20 years ago are coming up. I'm still holding that baggage and we underestimate how much baggage we pick up as kids. So learn to forgive yourself as well and implement a self-care routine and putting your needs first. Making sure that we're in tune with our emotional health. So not just being able to communicate our emotions healthy in a healthy manner, but are we able to communicate and receive the emotions of others also? And then your financial health. So making sure that you're having a financial date with yourself, being completely honest, having that ability to say, this is what I owe. This is what my goals are. This is how I deal with my goals from last month. You know, being really honest about what your needs are. Create and stick to a budget that works for you. If you need a place to start, I do have a budget. It's a free download. You cannot be free. Um, it's a free download for a budget on Nicole'sNetwork.net. Go there, download the budget, but I want you to make adjustments. I want it to work for you, okay? Um, pay off your debt, save as well. So the last component of your overall health is your mental health. Please do not devalue the importance of your mental health, really and truly. Far too many times, 
we think of our mental health as being just, I don't even know. I really, really don't. But you have to find a way to manage your stress. And if you need help, if you need therapy, please get it. It's available to you. But far too many times there's a stigma on, uh, I don't want to be, I'm not crazy. I don't need that. Da, 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 da. But at the same time, it's a very healthy place and it's a very healthy outlet for sure. Um, I have been going to therapy for a, every day for a week, every week, once a week, <laughs> not every day, um, but I had been going to therapy every week for months because it was necessary. And even when I wasn't in a devastating place at that time, even when I was feeling okay, it was still healthy to say, you know, the surface is good. Let's work on some of those deep rooted issues. Let's work on some, unpackaging some of that baggage that I'm carrying around. Let's work on my daddy issues. Let's work on my low self-esteem. Let's work on my, you know, all of it. Just, <laughs> I wanted to unpack those baggage. I really, really did. And as a testament to that, I had been going to this lady for every week for months at this point and less than a year and a half from miscarrying my twins, which was the most devastating thing I've ever been through. Less than a year and a half later, she told me, you know, I think we're good to go to once a month. I think you're in a good space. You know, the senator and for her to say, please pay me less often. You know what I mean? That is a huge testament to my commitment to my mental health. Um, some of the ways that I like to manage stress, um, exercising regularly, minding my business. That applies to work. That applies to family. Those are the biggest triggers to when people don't mind their business. And I have to work the hardest in those two areas. I'm like, does this impact me? No. Great. Not my business. Putting my needs first. Venting to a trusted source. Fixing what you can. And letting go of what you cannot. And also making sure you have a safe place to feel vulnerable. Finding out who, what, or where that is. And feel, feeling comfortable to go there. So what's the difference between health and wellness? Um, health refers to your physical body being free from diseases. Wellness is an overall balance of your physical, social, spiritual, emotional, intellectual, environmental, and occupational well-being. Health includes being in sound body and mind, but wellness is more of a lifestyle. So really and truly, you need them both. But you have to make sure you plan for that. You do. We are very, very busy generation. We're very busy people. So making sure that you're taking the time to plan and say, when am I going to work out? When am I going to have alone time? When am I going to see my family? When am I going to work on my business? When am I going to do this? When am I going to do that? Planning it in advance also creates an accountability system. But beyond that, it allows you to realize that you have the time. And I talked about this a little bit on my Instagram story a couple days ago. But before you tell me you don't have time for something, tell me how late you sleep, slept in. Tell me how long it took you to get up in the morning. How late did you stay up last night? Did you go to bed early? How often are you going to bed early? How often are you sitting down and watching TV? What are you doing when you're watching the TV that you're watching? Are you being productive or are you lollygagging? Are you being aggressive or are you procrastinating? These are the questions that I want to know before you tell me you don't have time for something. Really and truly. And I'm living, breathing proof of it. I work anywhere between 50 to 7 hours, 50 to 70 hours a week, but at a minimum, 50 hours a week. I have an hour commute each way to work. So by default, my work week is a 60-hour week because I, when you factor in commuting, right? On top of that, I have my business. On top of that, I have my sorority obligations. On top of that, I coach cheerleading. On top of that, I still make time for my family. And I love sleep. So it's really about your priorities, and it's really about making sure that you plan ahead. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. 
So start with the big picture goal and create an action plan from there that includes smaller actionable steps with realistic deadlines attached. And if you don't know where to start, Google knows everything. Okay? So make sure you have someone holding you accountable, set realistic goals, and give them permission to hold you accountable to those goals. And so this is a, a commitment to yourself that I've asked everyone in our class in my classes that I taught this weekend um, to make to themselves. And I'm going to share it with you all because I want you to love yourself first. Okay. So it's dear me as my first and longest love story. I commit to put your needs first. I will love you fiercely while holding you to high standards. Together, we will chase our dreams. We will give our absolute best in everything we do. I will protect your peace, defend your space, and rest just as fiercely. You deserve to live your best life. On today, I commit that to you because you are my greatest love. And you are in this life, and we're in this life together forever. So if you've made that commitment to yourself today, I want you to write in the comments, I commit. Okay? Can you do that for me? Can you make that commitment to yourself? Please. All right, guys. See you next week.